everybody. Tony DeLorenzo here, and I'm excited to bring you Jim Katsolis with ProgramYourselfThin.com. Jim is a certified master hypnosis through the National Guild of Hypnotists. He's a master neurolinguistics practitioner. Jim is also a yoga instructor. And in this interview, you are going to learn a lot about your subconscious mind. So without further ado, let's join Jim. Welcome, Jim. Hey, how you doing, Tony? Good. Thank you for uh, coming on today. Glad to have you here. Oh, you're welcome. I'm excited to be here. I like this uh, series. It's great. Awesome. Hey, I introduced you briefly in the uh, introduction there, but could you get us up to date on who Jim is, how you got into what you're doing, and how it relates to fitness? Sure, sure. Um, well, my story started, you know, about 16 years ago when I was 20. Um, I found myself 50 pounds heavier than I am now. Um, wow. But worse than that was that, you know, I was in school for a degree I didn't want to do. Um, I was just generally overall stressed and not happy with my situation. Um, now, I kind of, well, the way I grew up, I was relatively able to focus on things and, and accomplish things, and I had willpower and all the rest of it. But I found myself in a situation where I couldn't stick to eating the right way. I couldn't stick to exercising. And I just, I, I could lose the weight a little bit, but then it would always come back on. Mm -hmm. And so I, I knew that I needed more than just a fitness program or a diet. Um, I needed to find something that would change me a little bit, a little on a deeper level. Okay. And so I began studying hypnosis, NLP, personal development, yoga. And um, that really helped me transform my life. Um, and I very quickly dropped the 50 pounds, um, but more importantly is I began to feel better. Um, I, I had a sense of peace and a, a sense of balance to my emotions that I'd never experienced before. And um, it was such a dramatic change in my life that I ended up getting, you know, I was in school to get, I got a degree in finance and investments. Um, and this made such a big difference in my life that I ended up getting certified in hypnosis, um, neurolinguistic programming as a yoga instructor. And I opened up a hypnosis office, began working with people one-on-one, -on -one, um, eventually began teaching seminars to groups of people, and ultimately um, putting programs together that I am um, able to offer online now. So helping people create changes. And the way I always describe it is kind of change from the inside out, as opposed to just looking at exercise programs or, or um, meal plans. It's really about an inside-out sort of transformation and change. And so that's what NLP and hypnosis is so useful for. Can, can you explain a little bit further the inside out that you're discussing? Because obviously mm. most of us, when we do look at fitness, we're looking at the outside and then right. we worry about sort of what's going in our mouth, which obviously affects our, affects our inside. So can sure. you explain a little more of that inside out? Right, right. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and there's a few different levels of it. Um, but the first one I think most people can relate to is it rarely do people need more information about what they should eat and how they, how they should exercise? You know, I, I think, I, I would almost guarantee that every person on this call knows what they should and shouldn't eat. I mean, the question is whether they're able to follow that for an extended period of time to get the changes they want. And what dictates whether they follow that or not? Well, a lot of it has to do with their moods. Right? I mean, when you get in a bad mood... Maybe you get in a fight with your wife and you're just, you just feel like you're at the end of the world. You really care what you eat. You know, you don't, you know. And so if people are constantly stressed, they're constantly overwhelmed, they're constantly worked up, it's very difficult to follow through on any sort of eating plan, right? Yeah. So, so that's part of the inside-out change is that, you know, if it comes down to it, I mean, if, if people never emotionally ate, right, what they would do is they would eat when they had a genuine hunger, Right? When you genuinely felt hungry, you would eat. And if you lived that way, you would be at your natural weight. Right? If you ate when you naturally had a hunger. But what happens is we live in a society where emotional eating is the challenge for most people. Oh, right? If there's no emotional eating. Yeah, right? most definitely. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's, like, it's like the whole thing. And it, it affects exercising as well. So, again, it's not just knowing what to do. It's knowing how to get yourself to do it. And so um, that's part of that inside-out change is that you focus on how you feel because when you feel motivated, when you're fired up, when you're focused on your health, when you feel good about your life, your relationships, your job, yourself, you have a tendency to want to eat better anyways, right? So that's a big part to focus on. Now, the other part is this, that in order to get to that place, we want to get rid of the trap that people do to themselves, which is 
they say, once I lose the weight, then I'll feel confident. Once I lose the weight, then I'll feel attractive, right? Um, in relationships, once I lose the weight, then we'll have intimacy. Because that's not how it works, right? Most of the time, if it was, when people lost weight, they would never put it back on again. Yeah, because it, they got it, to that point where then they're feeling sexy, they're having right? better intimacy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, everything's great, right? right? There would be no more emotional eating because everything was perfect. <laughs> but that doesn't happen because people yo-yo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And, and what happens is, I mean, it's interesting, working with so many people as I have and working on an unconscious level, you know, one of the common things is... Um,